Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the first lecture of this uh, Query on Trees lecture series. In this lecture, we are going to see uh, how uh, the tree flattening technique works or how the Euler Tor technique works. So the idea is simple. Uh, somehow we have to represent the whole tree, which is non-linear data structure, into a, an array, which is actually a linear data structure so the techniques that we have for the linear data structure the query techniques like uh, square root decomposition or segmentary we can apply on the trees so Euler tor technique is simply representation of a rooted tree of course this is important uh, the tree must be rooted uh, that basically means you must have a root even, even in the problem if the most likely if the root is not spe uh, specified you can actually choose a random uh, node as as a root and then proceed further most of the problem will uh, you can do this and if the choice of the root affects the problem then they will surely mention in the problem that this is the root node so all our technique is simply representation of a, a rooted tree into a number of sequence these are the number of sequence as you can see so what we are going to do we are going to represent the whole tree in a simple array so that uh, we can apply the techniques which are there for non-linear data structure like segmentary and so on uh, in this case we are studying it for Mohs algorithm which is nothing but uh, square root decomposition and queries so as you see uh, this is the starting time and this is the terminating time of the node I have already explained these two in number theory uh, sorry in the graph theory uh, course part one so starting time is the time at which you enter the node and terminating time of a node is the time when you leave that node so you see uh, suppose you entered node one at time one so that is why at index one we are having one you went uh, from there you went to two that is why starting time of two is two then you went to three that is why starting time of 3 is 4 because before uh, moving out we left node 2 so the time you leave no node 2 would be that uh, leaving time or terminating time of node 2 that is why 3 is here in, in the terminating time so the order in which you enter or leave the nodes are captured here in the flat tree array so how this goes let me show you with an example so suppose uh, this is the timer this is the flat tree array this is of course starting time and terminating time arrays uh, one thing you can see is that uh, size of the flat array is actually twice the size of the number of uh, number of nodes in the given tree the reason of course because in the flat array each node would be stored twice once when it enters the node second when you leave the node that is why the size of flat array is actually twice the size of the number of nodes in the tree so suppose we made a dfs call from the main function to node 1 which we are assuming to be root, uh, root. and so we reach node 1 at time 1 that is why starting time of node 1 is 1 which is the timer and also this timer would actually act as index in the uh, flat tree so at index 1 we would store node 1 because at time 1 node 1 was traversed Suppose we went from 1 to, uh, of course, after uh, capturing, uh, up after storing the node in the flat array and after storing the time at which you entered node 1 in the starting time, we increment the timer. Suppose from 1, we went to node 3. So, we reach node 3 at time 2. That is why at index 3, we are having 2, which indicates the time at which we entered node 3, which is 2. And also at index 2 we are having 3 again timer also acts as the index in the flat tree so that is why at index 2 we are having 3 which indicates at time uh, the second node processed word uh, was node 3 then we went to uh, we of course increment the timer we went to node 4 so we uh, entered node 4 at time 3 that is why we are having 3 here and of course at time uh, at index 3 in the flat tree we are having node 4 after that uh, there is nothing in the adjacency list of 4 to be traversed that is why we would leave node 4 but before we leave 
of course you would increment the timer and before we leave uh, we would store the terminating time of node 4 because you are about to leave node 4 that is why terminating time of node 4 is equal to the timer and also in the flat tree uh, array at time uh, at index 4 we would store node 4 we went to node 3 basically we backtracked from 3 of uh, from 4 to node 3 now that the sensi list of node 3 has completely been traversed that is why it would leave also but before that we would increment the timer and now this time to leave node 3 so terminating time of 3 would be stored and also uh, at index 5 we would store node 3 because now we are going to leave node 3 we left node 3 we went to node 1 uh, node 1 had traversed this subtree of it now it would go towards this subtree so it would make a dfs call to node 2 before that of course you would increment the timer uh, we went to sorry yeah we went to the timer is implemented each time when you store it uh, when you uh, store any node in the flat tree or uh, after the starting and flat tree or terminating or flat tree have been completed so timer is 6 and you went to node 2 so starting time of node 6 is 2 also at index 6 we inserted 2 now uh, starting time and free, uh, flat array have been completed uh, capturing node 2 that is why you would increment the timer it would become 7 now it's time to leave node 2 because there is nothing in the subtree of 2 to be traversed so before you leave node 2 terminating time of 2 would be recorded which is 7 and also at index 7 we would store node 2 and now we would uh, backtrack at node 1 there is nothing for node 1 to do now because all of its subtrees have been traversed that is why uh, of course we would increment the timer and at this time we are going to leave node 1 that is why terminating time of node 1 is 8 and at this index we are having node 1 so this is the flat tree the properties of the flat tree I will explain in a moment but let me show you the code uh, this font size should be good let me show you the code we use to generate flat tree and also the starting and terminating time so this is the starting time this is the terminating time this is a flat tree uh, this is a vector of uh, integers so each index can store a uh, uh, each index can have its own list because each index is actually a vector of integer so uh, this is basically for uh, adjacency list representation of the uh, graph now what we have done here we have taken we have n a b we have taken n as input which is the number of nodes in the tree so if there are n nodes in a tree of course there are n minus one edges so that is why we are reading n minus one edges in the adjacency list of a we are inserting b p b is pushback uh, this is a way to insert elements in the vector so in the adjacency list of A you are inserting B, in the adjacency list of B you are inserting A. This is nothing but uh, what we say uh, undirected graph. After that we initialize timer to be 1 and made a DFS call to node 1 which is root. And since root have no parent that is why we are, we are passing minus 1. So you see DFS uh, in the parameter list of DFS we are having two things. First is node and second is PAR which is actually the parent of the current node. Now, as we, as we enter any node, what we do, we we store, for the current node, we store its uh, time at which we entered or starting time of the current node. The time you enter, you initialize its starting time of the current node. Of course, the timer acts as the index of flat tree. That is why at this index, we are storing the current node because at this time, we are processing this node. That is why the starting time of node is equal to timer and in the flat tree at this index we are storing current node because at this time we are processing this node. After you have processed these two starting time and flat tree of course you would increment the timer. Now in the adjacency list of current node we are traversing each child if the child is not equal to parent. This is another way to traverse uh, uh, to apply DFS on tree when you are not using visited array all you need to keep is the parent so if child is not equal to parent we would make a dfs call to that node uh, to this child and passing the current node as its parent 
after that after you have traversed the whole adjacency list or basically you have traversed every single subtree of the current node what you would do you would simply leave this node but before that what we would do we would uh, capture the returning time or terminating time of the current node which is of course t of current node is equals to timer and also the timer acts as the index in the flat tree that is why uh, ft of timer is equals to node and since uh, terminating time and flat tree have been uh, processed we would increment the timer this is a simple algorithm using which the tree flattening is being uh, implemented and here i'm doing nothing just printing the whole starting array terminating array and flat tree array so if i show you this and if we run it for this example test case so you see there are four nodes one is connected to two one is connected to three three is connected to four so this is its starting time terminating time flat array so at time one we went to one at time two we uh, remember this array and this start array can be different be, uh, depending upon uh, the subtree you chose to traverse first uh, since for the same tree there can be many uh, dfs traversals possible that is why the starting time here can be different than the starting time here so of at time one we went to node one and then we went uh, we went to node two but here when we were taking example we went to node three first so that is why this and this is a little bit different but that doesn't matter so we went to one and then two from two we would return that is why the time at which you return from node two is actually three and so on you can you can confirm it yourself so this is how we process or uh, convert a tree in, into the flat tree. Now, if we look at some of the properties of uh, flat tree, if you want to know the total number of elements or if you want to the, uh, know the elements in a node's subtree, for example, if I want to know the nodes in the subtree of seven, what I can do, I can go to starting time of node seven, which is this, and terminating time of node seven, which is this all the nodes which lie in between this range starting time and terminating time lie in the subtree of node 7 you see we have 8 and 9 uh, we can see that each node is uh, appearing twice that is actually true because when you are traversing a subtree of a certain node what would happen you would enter that node and of course you would leave that node right uh, before you can leave actual node uh, the reason is that uh, of course you would not leave your uh, you would not exit from node 7 until and unless you have traversed all of the elements in its subtree that is why every single element which lies in the subtree of 7 of course would be traversed after you reach node 7 so in the dfs traversal first you would reach node 7 then only you would traverse all of its subtree and then you would leave that node right that is why after the starting time and before the terminating time of node 7 in between whatever you see is actually is the subtree of node uh, 7 so for node 2 you can see starting time here terminating time here all of the node which lies in between are actually part of subtree of node 2 so 3, 4, 5 and 6 lie in the subtree of node 2. So we can see 3, 4, 5 and 6 lie in the subtree of 2, including 2. Uh, similarly, for path also, we can use the same flat array and we can check or we can confirm the, we can find the path between two nodes. That is a little bit difficult than finding the subtree of a given node. We will see that in the different lecture for now we have studied about in this lecture we have studied how we can construct the starting terminating and the flat tree array uh, and using this array we can uh, we know that for, to find uh, num uh, find the elements in the subtree of a certain node you can see uh, you can start from starting time of that node traverse till the ending time of certain node all of the node which are appearing twice lie in the uh, subtree of that node if you only are concerned about the subtree of a certain node that means if you only are 
uh, interested in finding the nodes in the subtree of certain node what you can do you can construct flat tree array in a different manner and that is you can construct flat tree array only by starting time you don't have to keep the terminating time but that would cause a problem so let's stick to this notification there is one uh, there are in fact three different types of uh, uh, flat tree array but we are uh, we will be sticking uh, sticking to this of course because most algorithm which we are going to apply on the trees uh, that can be applied using this flat tree on both on the path queries and the uh, subtree query so in the next lecture we will see how most algorithm can be applied to a subtree query type problems so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you